All right, folks, so in front of me, I have the Carbon Gray DLC Phoenix 6 Sapphire from Garmin. So today we're gonna go ahead and unbox it. We're gonna set it up. We're gonna look at the interface, including some of those new widget glances. We're gonna go through the menus, look at some of those power management modes, we'll look at all the activity profiles. We'll look at some of those new map themes, and then maybe we'll even go through some of the data pages and some of the new data fields that are gonna be available. Oh, and since uh, I have the Phoenix 5 Plus here, we'll actually compare that new 1.3 inch display to the 1.2 inch from last year. And if you'd like a breakdown in terms of all the different variants that you can get with the Phoenix 6, as well as all the new features that come with the Phoenix 6, I'll have a video linked either up here or the description below where you can find out about all that good stuff. And although this is just an unboxing setup and interface tour, if you're new to the channel, I like to do really in-depth reviews of these types of devices. And I try to test as many aspects as possible just so you can get a better idea if it's gonna work for you. And I'll be doing the same with the Phoenix 6. And this is pretty good timing considering I'm wrapping up some other <laughs> long-term reviews right now. So make sure to subscribe to the channel to get a notification when any of those videos come out. Oh, and if you do find this video helpful or informative, make sure to hit that like button down below as it definitely helps the channel out a lot and I appreciate it. So I guess, first of all, this is the Phoenix 6 Sapphire. And although it doesn't have pro in the name, it actually does come with a pro level feature such as the music, Wi-Fi, and maps. I guess with that out of the way, let's just go ahead and get this out of the box. All right, so this is a pretty simple box like most Garmin. So it's gonna have Sapphire in the front here, which denotes the Sapphire Edition. Then on the back, you're gonna have a list of a lot of the specs, such as the 14 days of battery life, the new 1.3 inch display, the power manager, Pace Pro, Trendline, Popularity Routing, Pulse Ox, and the new top, Topo and Ski Maps. All right, so there it is. I'm gonna go lift this out of the box. In the box, inside the box, we're gonna have the instruction manual, safety information, as well as the charging cable, which is gonna be pretty much the same charging cable that's on almost all Garmin devices now. So the Phoenix 5 series, the 945, 245, all right, so taking a quick look at the watch before we turn it on, it's got the nice film on top with a topographical map. It actually looks like it has the town of Aspen on there, which is kind of cool. Let's go ahead and do that. So it does look like they updated the band just slightly where it has kind of these um, little ridges on the outside. Now, really quick before we get into it, you are gonna see that uh, I have a very, very well uh, loved old Phoenix 5 plus tie from last year. So I'm a mountain biker, so I do take crashes and spills and this just just what unfortunately happens. But as you can tell, the sapphire glass screen is perfect. For the actual bezel, it looks like they kind of went with a lot smoother finish on the outside. So you'll notice that these ridges are really smoothed out. Um, there's kind of not these more abrupt edges for the screw hole, so that's kind of nice to see. Buttons look to be about the same, and there does appear to be a slightly shorter lug distance right there. On the back of the device, we have sapphire kind of actually etched in there, so that's kind of neat. Um, this is, again is gonna be nice and smooth on the outside. For the start button, we kind of have that nice familiar triangle right there. And then they also did switch the charging port from one side of the device to the other. Quick fit bands work just the same, clickety clickety, and now it's time to turn it on. So I really didn't think that 10th of an inch would actually make that much of a difference, but I can tell immediately the size difference between these two. It's definitely a lot cleaner and there's gonna be a lot less bezel. So we'll choose English, pair with phone, yes. Anyways, it just says ready to connect your Phoenix 6 Pro. I do like that new uh, kind of animation on the outside right there. That's kind of nice. Boom, set up complete. I think that took maybe a minute. So now we can take a look at the device itself. With the stock watch face that comes straight out of the box, you're gonna have your altitude, steps, high, low temperature, battery, as well as heart rate. I'm not wearing it, so it's obviously not showing that heart rate right now. But let's go ahead and check out these widget glances. So with the widget glances, it's gonna be nice because you're gonna have be able to see the widget kind of above and below, so you won't have this full page widget kind of action happening. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and iterate through these. But basically with the weather, we can enter here, there's gonna be a slightly different interface, but you'll still see the familiar hourly as well as daily. And then you can have your sunrise and sunset. I think this is pretty cool where you'll be able to see the days ahead as well as days behind to kind of plan different uh, activities. And then you're gonna have your ABC, which is gonna be familiar with your altimeter, barometer, compass. And then you're gonna have your physiological stats like your VO2 max. What you'll notice is that you'll have your running VO2 max as well as your cycling VO2 max, which are definitely a lot different in my case. So you see your lactate threshold and then race predictor. And if we back out of that, here's where we can see your training status. 
VO2 max chart, training load, training load focus. And this is definitely one of my favorite features is it kind of shows uh, where you're putting a lot of focus as well as maybe where you should focus a little bit more than recovery time, altitude acclimation, as well as heat acclimation. Then we're gonna see the last activity. That was an indoor ride that I did yesterday. Then you have your steps. And this, uh, you'll notice a little bit of a different interface element right here as well. But that looks pretty familiar. Then you're gonna have your health stats, your heart rate, stress level, uh, body battery, pulse OX, calendar, notifications. And this is what a notification looks like. So, and then music controls. So let's go to the edit menu and see what other widgets are gonna be available. So these are gonna be all the widgets that are already loaded. And then at the bottom should have add widgets. And then we're gonna have last run, last ride, last swim, golf, heart rate, floors, climb, my day, calories, intensity, minutes, stress, altimeter, barometer, compass, temperature, dog track, in reach, all time zones, zero Garmin coach, body battery, and history. While we're here, let's go ahead and take a look at the watch faces, I guess. So like I said, that was the stock watch face that came straight out of the box. There's the one above it. That one's pretty attractive. Oh, this is kind of cool. So it'll actually show your training status as well as your VO2 max directly on the watch face itself. Pretty cool stuff. I think I like this one. We're gonna use that one. Okay, so we're gonna have your controls menu, power off, battery saver. So this is gonna be a mode that's essentially gonna turn everything off on the watch and it's also going to go to a low power watch face, which actually does not have uh, a second hand basically. So let's go ahead and turn that on. You'll see that immediately increase the battery of the entire watch in a smartwatch mode basically, or not even smartwatch mode, just like a watch mode to 47 days. And then if we back out of there, you'll notice that the watch face is completely different, just a nice low power, not that much white on it. Really, really basic. Let's go ahead and turn that off. But then you're gonna have your music controls, wallet, timers, alarms, saving location, alt time zones, find my phone, do not disturb. And you can customize a lot of these right here. All right, so now let's go ahead and go through the activity profiles. And I did already add these in here just to save you a bit of time. But uh, what we're gonna have is trail run, run, treadmill, indoor track, hike, climb, bike, biking indoors, mountain bike profile, pool swimming, as well as open water swimming, triathlon, strength training, skiing and snowboarding, cross country skiing, stand up paddleboarding, rowing, rowing indoors, kayaking, golf, walking, cardio, yoga, swim run. And then we're gonna have uh, navigation as well as expedition. The expedition activity profile is gonna take a GPS sample once an hour and it's gonna extend the battery life to like some crazy amount. And then you're gonna have track me as well as map. And then we're gonna go ahead and add some more here. We're gonna see what else is here. So we're gonna have multi-sport, true swing, project waypoint, HRV stress. And this is gonna be different than the stress widget where this is actually gonna use an external heart rate monitor, which is going to provide a lot more accurate results for somebody who wants to do this on uh, at a certain point throughout every day. Clocks, floor climb, elliptical, stair stepper, jump master for all you people who like to jump out of planes, tactical, boat, cross country skate ski, as well as other. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some data fields and some data pages. So let's go ahead and use the run profile. And what you'll see is the familiar options if you press the up button as well as your remaining battery. So let's go ahead and check out these options first of all. And then you're gonna have your run settings, power mode, training, as well as navigation. In terms of the run settings, you're gonna have your data screens and we'll check these out here in just a second. Alerts, power mode, metronome, map, routing, auto lap, auto pause, climb pro, auto climb, 3D speed, 3D distance, lap key, auto scroll, segment alerts, your GPS settings, power save timeout, background color, accent color, renaming and restoring to defaults. So with the power modes, here's where you can actually toggle through the different power modes. And with this normal power mode, you're gonna have GPS plus GLONASS, heart rate, uh, wrist-based heart rate, phone notifications, as well as music. With a max battery that increases from 29 hours to 70 hours where it's gonna use ultra track mode, disables wrist-based heart rate, no phone notifications and no music. And then with the jacket mode, this is gonna disable your wrist-based heart rate because this is gonna be designed so you can actually wear the watch on outside your jacket so you won't need wrist-based heart rate. And then here's a custom profile that I already set up and I'll show you in the power modes here in just one second how that actually works. In the run setting, let's go back to the data screens. So here's where we can see that uh, we're gonna have a little bit different interface, but you're gonna have nice color-coded heart rate, so it'll actually show your different zones. You're gonna have your laps, 
Same with the heart rate up top, time of day, and then a map. Let's go ahead and add a new data screen. So we're gonna do custom data, choosing the layouts. Here is where this is the standard six. So this has the ability to use six data fields. So the 6X Pro and the 6X Pro Solar have the ability to do eight. So let's go ahead and just choose that one. We're gonna go and choose a field right there. So let's go ahead and choose heart rate for that top one. And I'll just choose some here. There you go. There's gonna be a new six data field layout right there. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the settings menu. So first of all, we're gonna see the watch face as well as clocks, history. And then we go into the actual settings menu and this is gonna be where you have your activities and apps, widgets, controls, watch face, sensors, accessories, map, music, phone, Wi-Fi, physiological metrics, audio prompts, your user profile, safety and tracking, activity tracking, navigation, power manager, as well as systems. So let's go ahead and check out this power manager right here. And this is where you're gonna see that familiar battery save mode. And then again, it's like with a full charge, you should be able to get 48 days out of it if you'd really like to. And then with the power modes, this is where you're gonna have your different power modes that you can set up. So this is the max battery mode that we just saw before, jacket mode, as well as that custom mode that I set up. So let's go ahead and set one up really quick. So we're gonna go ahead and add new. This is gonna be my B profile right here. And then what you're gonna see is the different settings. So you're gonna have your GPS settings where you can actually turn it off, normal, ultra track, GPS plus GLONASS or GPS plus Galileo. And then again, you can actually disable or enable your usage and music is just gonna zap your battery. So that's something that uh, you definitely wanna consider. Your phone, then you have wrist-based heart rate. Turning it off will actually add two hours. Pulse oximeter, your map, display, backlight, and then accessories. So the other thing I wanted to show you are gonna be these map themes. So. And their map themes, you're gonna have system, none, marine, high contrast, dark, popularity, and resort ski. So basically these are just gonna be based on what your particular activity that you're gonna be doing. And there you go, that's a pretty substantial tour of the new Phoenix 6. Anyhow, like usual, I'll be putting the Phoenix 6 through its paces and testing it out for as many things as I can possibly do on it. So make sure to subscribe to get a notification when that video comes out. And if you have any questions about the Phoenix 6 in terms of the menus, interface, features, anything like that, make sure to leave those in the comments section down below. And on your way down there, you can hit that like button if you found this video useful. In the meantime, thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.